If you're just getting started in Character Animator, one of the best resources at your disposal is in the Start Workspace. It's the 16 built-in template puppet characters. These characters cover a wide variety of body types and feature sets and all sorts of different things. So it's worth digging into them and learning how they were put together. In this three video series, we're digging a little deeper into each puppet to learn a couple of interesting things about each one. In this video, we'll take a look at Red Monster, character animator's lovable little mascot, Dr. Applesmith, which is a great example of a stop motion style character made out of Sculpey modeling clay, the highly customizable character Sticky, the unicorn with a wide range of emotions, Stardust, and finally a witch with a lot of different tricks up her sleeves. Red Monster is a deceptively uh, simple character. So, you know, it's just this little blob with a face that's, you know, smiling and happy and can kind of dance around. Uh, but he's also got a lot of triggers behind the scenes as well. So if I press one, he gets a little light bulb animation. Two, he does the exclamation mark. Three questions four, a little heart, uh, five makes the uh, glasses come on and off, six will actually trigger one of his replays, a little dance move uh, where he kind of goes back and forth for 5.3 seconds. You can see it playing back over in the replays panel over here. And then seven will do his surprised face uh, replay as well. So, uh, you know, it's a really simple setup and shape, basically this little blob with the face, but um, it shows you can start to add a lot of extra things to your character to add some additional personality and expressiveness uh, to him or her. So what's interesting about Red Monster is if I turned off his visibility on his head, you can see that really, uh, you know, the head is just the eyes, nose, and mouth, these floating elements, and then the movement of that as you move your own head is what's pulling the body uh, around. So it's, it's still these two separate distinct groups, but um, the head is really driving the full movement of the body, and because the head is basically on top of the body, it really pushes that movement um, quite a lot. If you twirl open the props folder, you'll see uh, a bunch of the different things, the light bulb, the heart, the glasses, how those were all set up. So you can click on any of these and look in your triggers panel down here to understand how all these different things came to be. So you can see behind the scenes, he's actually got quite a lot of things uh, going on with him. You know, he's got like 10 or 12 triggers associated with him. So, um, you know, even a simple, you know, character made of simple geometric shapes and, and bright colors and kind of a flat shaded style, um, you can get a lot of emotion out of him. So to me, Red Monster is kind of the evolution of the blank face template, right? It's got the eyes and the mouth, but it's added a few extra things to make the character a little bit more interesting and uh, start to add triggers and personality and replays and a few other things to them. So this is kind of, to me, blank face 1.5. It's a great way to kind of understand how to take simple geometric shapes and turn it into an interesting character. Dr. Applesmith is a great example of a uh, non-hand-drawn or non-vector created character. He was actually photographed. He was actually made out of Sculpey modeling clay. They photographed him, composited the different parts together, uh, tagged and organized everything to create kind of a stop motion style look. So you can see if I like go into the, you know, turn off the nose or turn off the eyes, I can see that these are all individual elements. They were photographed separately and then put together to create this final look. So one thing I would recommend with a character Character like this is if you're going for more of that stop motion style look I would recommend lowering the frame rate to something like 12 frames per second so I can do that by selecting the scene that this character is in I go over to the scene properties and I can change the frame rate rate to uh, 12 FPS and then you get a little bit more jumpiness it's not as smooth as if I upped it to 24 or 30 or 60 or anything like that but I think it adds to that kind of uh, jumpy stop motion old school uh, style and I think it works particularly well for a character like like this. So I think this goes to show that, you know, you could shoot a Lego character or an action figure or a Barbie doll or something like that. And if you animate and add certain parts to it, you can animate them using your face and voice and character animator. Sticky is one of those characters that looks really simple on the surface, but behind the scenes, there is a lot of complexity going on. And that's because Sticky has a ton of customization controls. So if I were to go to the controls panel uh, over here, I can change the hairstyle, I can change the hair color, um, add some facial hair, uh, change the face tone, clothes color, 
a bunch of different things. I have a bunch of options here. That's a beautiful character, by the way. Um, so how do you do this sort of stuff behind the scenes? Well, let's take something like the torso here and changing the clothes color. You'll notice there's two groups here, clothes color and clothes. The clothes has two different versions, the shirt and the dress, and then the clothes color has a bunch of different colors associated with it. So let's take something like, uh, let's do something like a purple color um, and notice that the, you know, the shirt automatically changes purple. The reason that's happening is because a clipping mask has been added to clothes color to say, mask this color to the shape that is in the group directly below it, in this case, the shirt. But if I were to change that to the dress, the color is going to be instead masked to that. If I wanted to see the, the full color, all I have to do is go to Puppet Release Clipping Mask, and now you'll see that that purple color is actually much bigger than the dress or the shirt itself. But because I did Puppet Create Clipping Mask, that is going to confine it to just that shape. So it's a really smart way to give you a lot of custom control um, without uh, needing to make every asset, uh, you know, so making every version of the dress or every version of the shirt. It's just using these colors to manipulate multiple things below them. Now, the reason that those sliders are working is because closed color, you'll see, has a behavior associated with it called layer picker. And layer picker is kind of a way, you know, when you think of cycle layers, for example, that's a way to do a frame by frame animation. Well, this is a way to go through the contents of a group in several different ways. So whether that's uh, audio sensitivity, how much, you know, how loud a signal is, or mouse and touch strength, moving the mouse around, or in this case, percentage offset. So what uh, was actually done was this uh, thing was dragged into this particular parameter was dragged into the controls panel and created into a slider and to show you exactly what I mean. So let's go to layout mode here. Let's take close color, move it over here, right click it, go to ungroup. You can see this was actually made by several percentage offsets in the character. And so that's all it is. When I move this value up and down, it is moving between the different, uh, you know, contents of that group back and forth. And so you take that concept for something like hair color and I can right click this and ungroup that you'll see that has a ton of things, you know, like eight different percentage offsets because it's dealing with the hair color across the front of the character, the back hair, um, the facial hair, multiple elements at the same time. So all those things were right clicked and grouped together to create one custom control that's changing everything at the same time. One other thing you might notice with Sticky is that he's got a lot of little icons, these little uh, puppet pawn looking icons around, and that basically denotes if something is shareable. When you bring Sticky in, you should notice in your project panel, you're gonna get this thing called Sticky Shareables, and you get the backgrounds, the facial hairs, all these different elements. Um, basically, it's a way, you know, when if you wanted to turn, for example, the left profile of view of this character into a puppet that you could use in other places, you just right click it, go to um, make left profile shareable, and now you see left profile shows up as its own new separate puppet. I can double click it and it appears with all the structure here as I would expect. So that's the really smart thing about Sticky. You'll see the head uh, shows up here multiple times because there's a lot of different views to the character. Um, but what you can actually do is just make one head, make it shareable, it shows up over here, and then you can keep dragging it into your character multiple times. So you're only really dealing with one head and one rigging of that head, um, even though it has multiple instances showing up over a character. It's more of an advanced concept, but there's some really cool stuff you can do with it. So honestly, I feel like I could spend a five hour tutorial on this character and still not touch upon everything. Um, there is a lot to dig into. So if you're really interested in seeing how far you can push character animator, this might be a really interesting character to uh, take a closer look at. Stardust to me is a great example of using the eyes and mouth to get a lot of expressiveness from a character. So let me turn the uh, microphone off for a second and just show you, you know, if I click through some of these triggers in the controls panel, I can make uh, Stardust feel happy or smiling or, ooh, or upset or, you know, kind of worried. 
angry, um, kind of bored with things. So you get a lot more personality from the character from these different things. And basically these are single triggers that are manipulating a bunch of things at any given time. In addition, you have a few replays over here, like this celebration replay, a little bit of a dance move. And it has this nice little custom icon that's been added down here as well. So if I go into the triggers panel over here, let's take something like the, uh, you know, the happy version. You can see that what it's actually doing, if I drag this up, uh, it's triggering quite a few things. Basically, it's changing the eyelids and the uh, mouth in a bunch of different views in the left quarter, right quarter, front profile, all these different things. And he's playing these little frame by frame sequences. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes to get this to work right and to be as simple as just pressing one happy trigger to make everything happen. But that's how you do it. So a lot of these triggers are the exact same thing. It's just a bunch of different, um, you know, parts of the character that are moving simultaneously. Now this character only had one head view, um, just front facing. This would be a lot easier. It would just be, you know, the left eyelid, the right eyelid, um, the mouth, and then you could call it a day. But because there's so many different views, they've got to compensate for all seven of the views that they're doing um, down here. I think when you get to surprised and stuff, it's a little simpler. They're only doing, you know, one thing at a time. They're just doing the mouth set, for example, for this. But if you're interested in this kind of expressive eye and mouth triggering style, I would look closer closer at Stardust and see exactly how it's set up. Now for those custom icons, what they'd have is this invisible group called icons. It's actually hidden behind the character, but it doesn't matter because it's been turned off of uh, visibility anyway. And they've got a wave icon, a point icon, celebrate icon, all of these things. Normally you don't have the controls panel open in rig mode, but if I were to go to window uh, controls, it's going to show up down here. If I go into layout mode, I can drag any element into one of these buttons to change the artwork. So if I wanted this, you know, C key to be a wave icon or any custom icon I've done, I would just drag this layer over top of it and it's going to add that as the new button. And so when I press this now, that is going to, you know, do whatever I want. So if I wanted kind of a friendlier, more user-friendly interface, um, icons that are easily identifiable and understandable, um, you know, when you're in the, the thick of things and recording or live streaming, um, this is the way to do it. Create a nice little hidden, invisible custom set, drag it in rig mode, and then you get this nice, uh, you know, visual custom controls panel. Heather is one of the few puppets that also includes a background and an interactive object as part of her puppet. Uh, and she's got a lot of fun triggers. If I press B, she blinks. If I press Z, her arms come out and I can drag them. They have the arm IK behavior associated with them. So they should bend as you would expect and do some you know cool spells here. Um, if I press V, her wand appears and uh, disappears uh, on demand with a little nice cycle layers animation. C is gonna make a witch's hat appear on her head. Uh, a I believe does a little proof of smoke, a lot of cool things like that. Her hand also has a magnet uh, tag attached to it, as does the crystal ball that's on the bottom. So if I drag this hand down here close to the ball, it's going to attach and connect the two. So this is a great example if you have a character that wants to grab a coffee cup or a sword or something like that, um, you can use this as a template uh, to work from. And if you look at her in rig mode, you can kind of see the hierarchy of all these different parts as her puppet. Normally the puppet would just be this wizard girl, right? Um, her head, her body, all of that stuff together. But this also has a background, um, foreground, the desk area, uh, the ball that's an interactive object. All these different things are these independent elements. A lot of them are set to the free attach style so they can move on their own or be completely independent and not be dictated by the movements of you know her head or her arms or anything like that. These are all kind of independent elements. And the reason all the magnet stuff is working is if I go into the left arm here, I can see that there's a magnet tag that has been added um, to this when it gets triggered. It's invisible right now because our arms are folded by default, but you can see the general outline of it. And then same with the ball, the uh, crystal ball over here also has the magnet tag. Now the last step for that is you have to add the magnet behavior as well. So up here, she's got the normal stuff, uh, eye gaze, face, all that stuff, but then she also has the magnets behavior that was uh, added and that has the strength and the range. And if you wanted that crystal ball to be a little more floaty and not attach so quickly, 
you could adjust these, maybe also jump into physics and change the gravity to be zero gravity and you know have it a lot more floaty. So you've got a lot of control over kind of this attachment and, and how it works. So that's it for this video, but please check out the other two videos that go into the other characters and tell you all the tips and tricks behind the scenes with them. If you're making anything with any of these template characters or your own creations, we would love to see them. Please share them on social media with hashtag character animator so we can find them. And if you're running to any problems with rigging or putting your characters together or editing any of these characters and want to understand more about how they work, go to the official forums for further help. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and have fun.